This is Elliot Roger, a 22-year-old man from Isla Vista, California, who became so upset by his inability to lose his virginity that he decided to unleash a merciless retaliation upon society, which ended with him killing six innocent people and injuring another 14 in the process. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. I'm 22 years old and I'm still a virgin. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me. But I will punish you all for it. You denied me a happy life. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. It's only fair. I hate all of you. I can't wait to give you exactly what you deserve. Utter annihilation. <laughs> Elliot Roger was born on July 24th, 1991, in London, England. Nothing from his childhood seemed out of the ordinary. He was the son of Peter Roger, a British filmmaker and photographer, and his mother was Lee Chin, a nurse who also worked in the film industry. In 1996, when Elliot was five years old, his father's career started taking off, and the family immigrated to the United States, settling in Los Angeles, the entertainment capital of the world. Elliot seemed to adjust well to life in the U.S. His teachers described him as a well-behaved kid who, although shy, seemed to fit in quite well. He even made a couple of friends along the way. It was, however, around Elliot's seventh birthday that things started to take a turn, marking the beginning of significant changes in his life. His parents decided to call it quits on their marriage, and only a few months later his dad was in a relationship with someone else. Things moved very quickly, and before Elliot could even compute what was happening, the lady had moved in, and shortly afterward became his new stepmother. Elliot and his stepmother didn't exactly see eye to eye. Their relationship was marked by frequent arguments, with Elliot vehemently resisting any attempts at discipline, insisting that she held no authority over him, as she wasn't his real mother. As the years went on, Elliot's confidence dwindled, he became more insecure and withdrawn. This turmoil only seemed to intensify once he entered his teenage years. Not only was he struggling with his self-confidence and maintaining friendships, but his dad and stepmom had also welcomed a new addition to the family. To Elliot, it felt as if the birth of his little baby brother had stolen the limelight, leaving him grappling with a sense of displacement and uncertainty about his place in the world. His struggles even extended beyond the confines of his family life. The vibrant social circle that had once surrounded Elliot began to shrink, and he didn't seem to fit in anywhere, further deepening his feelings of isolation. To make matters worse, he became the target of relentless torment, enduring the cruel taunts and bullying of his classmates. In one particularly distressing incident, he found himself at the mercy of his peers, subjected to the degrading act of having his head forcibly taped to his own desk in full view of his other classmates. While the hardships Elliot faced in the real world were undeniably challenging, his life viewed from an outsider's perspective seemed to unfold against a backdrop of privilege and opulence. Thanks to his dad's job working on high-profile sets in the film industry, Elliot was granted access to a world most children only dream of. He got to attend a private Katy Perry concert with his mom and sister, walked the red carpet for the Hunger Games premiere, went on several holidays abroad flying first class and pretty much got whatever he wanted. Hey, Elliot Roger here. Today I'm at Saranya Park. Just took a nice long hike up in those hills. I would say this is one of the most significant places of my life. I grew up here. My parents used to always take me here when I was a kid. Back when my life was happy and fair. Back when I thought the world was fair. How naive I was. I was only an innocent child. And now, here I am. After living a horrible, unjust life. A wasted youth deprived of any, any sort of fun or enjoyment or pleasure. 
all because females were never attracted to me. Right now I'm wearing my Hugo Boss shirt. It's one of my favorite button-down shirts. This is a shirt I wore to the premiere of the Hunger Games. I looked fabulous. And yeah, I did walk on the red carpet on that premiere. It was quite... quite an experience indeed. Despite the material wealth and possessions that surrounded Elliot, he wasn't happy with the life he lived. He wasn't able to forge genuine connections or maintain existing bonds, and his social life inevitably suffered. Before he even knew it, he had no friends left besides the few he met through playing online video games, and his only avenue of letting off steam was through his online blogs and YouTube video diaries. By the time he was 16 years old, he had already started seeing a psychiatrist and was prescribed antipsychotic medication to treat schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, although he openly admitted in his blogs that he refused to take any medication as there wasn't anything wrong with him. Hey, Elliot Roger here. Right now I'm just taking a walk through the park in this really nice secluded area. I'm just contemplating about my life and how unfair it's been lately. Ever since I started desiring girls, but they never desired me back. Life has been a living hell since then. Right now it's spring break. Everyone else my age is out having fun with their friends and their girlfriends. Here I am, taking lonely walks through a park. By the time Elliot turned 18, he became increasingly despondent with his inability to make friends and his struggle to find a girlfriend. Elliot had actually become obsessed with the idea of having a girlfriend, and his thoughts revolved around it on a daily basis. Realizing that he couldn't continue on this path of solitude, Elliot resolved to take matters into his own hands determined to transform himself into someone more desirable to the opposite sex. He embarked on a quest for self-improvement, guided by the belief that by enhancing his desirability, he could finally find the connection he so desperately craved. He decided that he needed to learn how to drive, and he convinced his dad to buy him a BMW, a symbol of status and allure that he hoped would capture the attention of females. He also decided to change his outward appearance to try and stand out more, changing his hairstyle and buying himself a new wardrobe. Despite Elliot's endeavors to transform his image, his classmates, however, noted that he never actually tried to speak to anyone or make any friends. Instead, he would sit in his car during lunch break, expecting the girls to come to him and engage him in conversation. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm sitting in my car, making... Another entry in my collection of vlogs. Today I want to talk about the kind of men that girls are attracted to. You see, ever since I hit puberty, I've wanted girls, I've desired girls, I've been sexually attracted to girls but they've never shown any attraction back to me. And during that time, I've tried to question why. Why aren't they attracted to me? Even though during the last two years, I've tried really hard to appear as attractive as possible and to be as attractive as possible. And I've... I've often made theories of the kind of guys that girls really are attracted to. After going to college for two and a half years and seeing all of the horrific sights I've seen there, mainly all of the young couples walking about, the guys who actually have the hot girls, I've concluded that Females have a, a very flawed and perverted form of sexual attraction. In 2011, when Elliot was 19 years old, he moved to Isla Vista to attend the Santa Barbara City College. With this geographical shift came the possibility of a fresh start, a chance to leave behind the struggles that plagued him. 
However, it soon became apparent that the baggage of his past seemed to follow him to Isla Vista. He moved into a private residence with two housemates, and almost immediately conflict started. He would argue with them on a daily basis, almost getting into physical fights on a couple of occasions. The longing for a girlfriend continued too. He would often get so angry at seeing couples that it would spoil his entire day. I'm so angry right now. I was enjoying a peaceful time at this beach park. And what comes to sit in front of me? A young couple, a guy with his hot girlfriend. I mean, who do they think they are? Coming here, sitting in front of me to make me feel jealous? This is the reason why I hate the world. This is getting too out of hand. I can't go anywhere anymore without seeing these young couples getting jealous and you know, having them remind me of what I'm lacking in life. And how can I feel a sense of pride when I go out knowing that I'll see guys with their girlfriends? I mean, look at them. Who do they think they are? When Elliot realized that his wardrobe and BMW weren't getting the attention of the girls, and he was no closer to finding a girlfriend, he convinced himself that wealth was the key to finding a partner. He fixated on the notion that being richer than anyone else would surely guarantee romantic success, and he would no doubt be the envy of his classmates. Fueled by this extravagant dream, Elliot set his sights on winning the lottery, believing it was the key to solving all his problems. Over the next couple of weeks, he spent over $1,500 on lottery tickets, convinced that he'd win the jackpot. But when fortune unsurprisingly didn't favor him, Elliot flew into a fit of rage. In his distorted perception, life had cruelly cheated him, denying him the winnings he believed he deserved. Hey, Elliot Roger here. Right now I'm going on a little tour through Isla Vista on a Friday night. Every time I drive through this place, I am overcome with rage. Because I see so many guys walking around with beautiful blonde girls, enjoying their lives, while I've lived here for, for more than two years. I've had to watch other, other boys experience the life that I deserve. I'm going to show you all right now. So many beautiful girls walking around here. But they would never give me a chance. See, look at that one. I just passed one. They would reject me at every turn. In July 2013, Elliot was starting to put himself more out there, and at the same time becoming bolder. He started drinking excessively, and even attended some parties in Isla Vista. At one such party, Elliot was under the influence and high on confidence but yet still expected the girls to approach him. When the girls didn't show an interest in him, he started becoming nasty, and an argument broke out between them. He tried pushing one of the girls off a ten-foot ledge, and when some guys at the party saw what was happening, they intervened and instead pushed him off the ledge. It resulted in Elliot being beaten up and suffering a broken leg. Despite Elliot clearly being in the wrong, he blamed society for what had happened to him. He blamed the girls for not giving him a chance, and he blamed the boys for beating him up. In his mind, they were all being unfair to him, and it was due to this incident that he decided to take revenge. Over the next couple of months, Elliot's YouTube videos took a concerning turn, revealing deepening despair, radical ideas, and a growing sense of alarm. His videos eventually caught the attention of a concerned viewer who was worried by Elliot's escalating behavior. They eventually called the police who tracked him down and went to his house for a welfare check. Police interrogated Elliot outside of his bedroom door, questioning him on his mental state and attempting to gauge his well-being and potential risk. He managed to convince the officers that he was perfectly fine, alleviating their concerns. Satisfied with his responses, they departed his home without even searching his room. If the police did go into his room that day, not only would they have found his pistols and a plethora of ammunition, but they would have also found his chilling manifesto, where he outlined his plan for his day of retribution. Young couples walking around. 
makes me so envious. Here we are. It's still only 10 p.m., so it's not very active yet. It usually gets active at around 10.30. the house I got beat up at when I walked in on a party. That was about almost a year ago now. Back in August of 2013. Uh, here we go. Look at this. Groups of hot young sluts who would just reject me and these, look at these douchebags right here. These assholes, these obnoxious little slobs. Those are the kind of guys that girls like instead of magnificent gentlemen like myself. With the day of retribution edging closer, Elliot meticulously crafted a blueprint for his actions, dividing his plan into two distinct phases which would take place over two days. The first part of his plan was to drive to his father's house where he intended to kill his stepmother and little brother. He harbored a profound dislike for his stepmother and concluded that her presence in his life needed to be eliminated. He was also concerned that his younger brother would outshine him and become the man Elliot so desperately wanted to be, so he decided that his brother needed to go too. At the time, Elliot still had a very close relationship with his father, so he had no intention of attacking his dad. So he orchestrated the timing of his attack to overlap with a time that his dad was out of town. The next part of his plan was that he would then take his family's SUV and drive back to Isla Vista, where he would take the lives of his housemates, so that he could use the apartment as a place to lure strangers in, before beating and killing them. On day two of the attack, Elliot planned to target the Alpha Phi sorority, as he deemed them to be the dorm with the hottest girls on campus, and he decided to exact his revenge on them. In his distorted realm of resentments and twisted perceptions, this dorm symbolized the embodiment of every woman who had ever denied him, and every woman who had overlooked his existence. He then decided that after he was done with the dorm, he would head back to the car where he would attempt to run over as many pedestrians as possible before the police would catch up to him, and he inevitably needed to turn the gun on himself to evade capture. Elliot planned his attack for May 22nd and May 23rd. His father was due to be on a business trip, and Elliot started putting his plans in place. His father's business trip was however cancelled at the last moment, and Elliot subsequently cancelled the first part of his plan and decided that he would only act out on part two. So on the day that he was due to kill his stepmother and little brother, Elliot recorded one final YouTube video. Hi, Elliot Roger here. Well, this is my last video. It all has to come to this. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. The day in which I will have my revenge against humanity. Against all of you. I'm 22 years old, and I'm still a virgin. And it's been very torturous. It's not fair. You girls have never been attracted to me. I don't know why you girls aren't attracted to me, but I will punish you all for it. I don't know what you don't see in me. I'm the perfect guy, and yet you throw yourselves at all these obnoxious men. Instead of me, the supreme gentleman, I will punish all of you for it. You will finally see that I am, in truth, the superior one, the true alpha male. <laughs> yes. Well, now I will be a god compared to you. You will all be animals. You denied me a happy life. And in turn, I will deny all of you life. It's only fair. I hate all of you. <laughs> I've waited a long time for this. I can't wait to give you exactly what you deserve. Utter 
Annihilation. <laughs> On May 23, 2014, Elliot Roger began his day of retribution. He started by killing his two housemates, George Chen and Chung Yuan Hong, as well as their friend Wei Han Wang, who was visiting at the time. The three men received 142 stab wounds between them. At just after 9 p.m., Elliot went to his local Starbucks, where he ordered a vanilla latte, then uploaded his final video to YouTube and then sent his 137-page manifesto to 34 people, which included his parents, therapist, his former school teachers, and his childhood friends. His therapist immediately contacted his mother, who in turn called his dad and then the police, and they immediately jumped in their cars and raced to Isla Vista to try and stop Elliot. Unfortunately by then, it was already too late. Elliot had started the next part of his plan. He drove to the Alpha Phi sorority, and walked up to the front door and fiercely started knocking so that someone could open it. His plan was that as soon as someone opened the door, he would unleash fire and continue right through the sorority. His knocks, however, went unanswered, so Elliot went back to the street and shot three Tri-Delta sorority women who passed him at that very moment. He then got back into his car and headed into town, where he approached a local deli. He stood outside and fired several rounds through the deli's window, killing a 20-year-old student in the process. He then got back into his car and drove off to another location, driving on the wrong side of the road, and shooting at several pedestrians while hitting others with his car. At this point, police had caught up to him, and a gunfight ensued with three officers, with Elliot suffering a gunshot wound to his hip before speeding off. The police gave chase and were in hot pursuit of Elliot, who at this point was still intent on trying to cause as much damage as possible. He struck a cyclist with his BMW before crashing into several parked vehicles, with nowhere else left to flee, Elliot turned the gun on himself. Police officers found him dead behind the steering wheel of his car. In the car were three pistols, knives, six empty 10-round magazines, and 548 rounds of unspent ammunition. He ended up killing six innocent people and injuring another 14. Three of his victims were stabbed to death, his roommates George Chen and Cheng Yuan Hong, as well as their friend Wei Han Wang who was visiting that night. Three of his victims died due to gunshot wounds. Catherine Brand Cooper and Veronica Elizabeth Weiss were shot outside the Alpha Phi sorority house, while Christopher Michaels Martinez was the victim inside the Isla Vista Deli Mart. Of the 14 who were injured that night, seven were from gunshot wounds, and seven by blunt trauma sustained when Roger struck them with his vehicle. 